Hi, everybody. Um, you're here for my presentation. It's called Tracking User Behavior Creatively. My name is Kiana Tennyson, and uh, let us begin. So you're probably all wondering who I am, so I created a slide just for you, if you're wondering. Um, I'm a software engineer at a company called Mannheim. It's based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we are the highest volume operator of wholesale auto auctions in the world. Um, we have some, a couple of outposts here in Europe, including London, and I believe there's one in, uh, here in Germany in Hamburg. But uh, we, our, our software teams do not specifically handle their, uh, their, um, their inventory and the sales like how we do in, for the United States and for Canada. So those outposts are generally um, their own groups and just handle their own, their own uh, their websites and, and everything like that. My professional background is uh, working with web portals and uh, data aggregation. So uh, most of the jobs that I've taken tend to take um, data from, from separate places and aggregate them all onto one website or something like, of that nature. I have a goal for 2013. I'd put it up there. I want to be a contributor. I, I want to contribute to an open software, open source uh, project. And I'm thinking maybe WebRTC. We'll see. But um, I think people generally contribute first and then speak later. But for some reason, I did, did it the opposite, where I started speaking. That was my 2012 goal, was to be a speaker. And this year, I want to be a contributor. Occasionally, I blog. Um, my website is uh, shecodes.blogspot.com. So you can go over there and see my blatherings or whatever I've been saying over there. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kiana with four A's. I think that's correct. So if, it, if the Kiana with, if it's too many A's or too few A's, just take off some A's and add some A's till you find one. It's one of those. So uh, oops, I'm going too fast. Let me go back. So let's go to the disclaimer. This is a feasibility discussion. It's not an ethics discussion or a security discussion, but make sure that whatever you do, whatever you get out of this discussion, do not go to jail and do not get sued or defamed or anything. Ultimately, what we want to do when we track our users is uh, we want to take care of them and, um, and, and just take care of them so they'll continue to pay us. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so our overview today, uh, we're going to be discussing first the difference between uh, web analytics and user tracking, and we're going to follow that theme throughout the, uh, the discussion where we talk about both and how we can use ideas from, um, from web analytics to create uh, our user tracking strategies. Um, we're going to, and specifically, I'm going to talk about Google Analytics because I have a history in, um, in working with it. So. So that's what I'm most familiar with. But there are some open source uh, web analytics tools uh, like Snowplow or Piwik that you could use um, if you wanted to implement specifically analytics within your own apps. I don't know if they, um, I know that in their pipeline in the future, they, had, um, they have goals to bring Android specifically into their, uh, into their tool set. Um, but I know Google Analytics specifically does do Android. So we're going to talk about both. Um, we're also going to talk about data collection strategies. Um, uh, we're going to talk about how Google Analytics does it. And then we're going to talk about um, just a quick little talk about how you can do it for, your, for Android devices. Um, I'm sorry, that's the data transferal strategy. And we're going to talk about collection as well. I'm sorry, I'm going past. Um, and then we're going to talk about querying. So. Uh, Specifically, we're going to talk about the core reporting API uh, for Google Analytics. And um, I, let's see, I think I might have some slides for you all about querying. But I think that's mostly going to be dependent on the database and how you choose to, to, uh, to collect your data um, is, will determine how you, uh, how you choose to do the, your collection personally. So let's talk about the difference between analytics and user tracking. Um, analytics is a... Uh, the collection and the analysis and the reporting of internet data, um, but specifically, it is, um, it's a very broad spectrum. So you're not grant, it's not a granular thing like user tracking. So um, with user tracking, you would be able to specifically choose, what a, choose a user and know what they're doing within your app. Um, with web analytics, you get um, demographics and you get um, just very broad spectrums of what's happening in your app. 
Um, and specifically, if you choose to implement user tracking and you do user tracking tool, create a user tracking tool that works for you, you can also use that to uh, in turn create a web analytics uh, solution for yourself. Um, I wanted to give you guys a, a particular anecdote which made me think of, uh, which made me decide to create this talk was, um, um, I was working with a hotel company where we had a small group of internal users. Um, it was a hotel company and it was, um, we had about 140 hotels and at each of the hotels we had an average of about five to ten users at each, at each location. So we had a small, um, small set of users. Um, and these users would call, um, co they would call our customer service, the headquarters, and say that the internal tool was like something had happened, an exception had occurred, and our logs were not showing us that they were doing the same thing that they're saying they're doing. So we would see an exception, and we would try to figure out what, how did they get make this exception occur? How did they throw that exception? Or they would tell us, well, I did this, this, and this, but it's not happening. Like. I did this, this, and this, and this is what made the error happen. And when we followed their same, their same um, path, we would not get that error. So we implemented our own user tracking tool where um, for every session, we would find where they are in the page, what they were doing, and we would be able to, when they called in, we would keep about um, a week's worth of logs. When they come in, when they call and say, we got to this page and something happened, we were able to go into our database and find the session that they were doing, and we wouldn't even have to ask them what they did. We would just follow what our what our uh, what our what our uh, solution told us they did, and we would be able to throw the exact same thing. So it was it was useful to us because we were able to quickly resolve our users' issues. And if you're definitely if you're working in a group where you have a small set of users, this is more specifically probably something that you could use. Um, but you can also use this for uh, when you're not when you're not identifying your users directly, you can also have very cool ways that you can create um, very uh, personalized, uh, personalized apps for them and you can make your app more, more tooled towards them and what they want. So let's go to um, Google Analytics specifically and talk about the interaction types they have and how you can use these interaction types uh, in your own user tracking. So for, um, for, analytics, for analytics tools, there's generally a page view ta tracking. Um, let me see, I think I put some cool animations in there. Did it happen? Did the animation occur? I don't think so, let me see. I don't know, did it jump or something? I don't know. So, so there's page view tracking where, um, where you're basically tracking where a user is going in your page, in your uh, website. And so um, in Android specifically, there's, um, they're not these ideas of pages, but our activities are, are the equivalent of a page in our, in our website. So if you can think about when your user clicks on something, clicks on, uh, a button that is going to take them to another activity that may be something that you would choose to track. There's also event tracking, um, which is basically layout interactions that are initiated by the user. So if there's some sort of event that the user partakes in, like they play a video or something of that nature, then uh, that would be an event that you would want to, um, that you would want to, to keep uh, hold of. There's also e-commerce tracking, which is um, where you're tracking average transactions and you're tracking in-app purchases. So if a user um, has made a purchase, that is, could be considered an event, but in terms of e-commerce, there's values that you would want to store uh, involved with that inventory and pricing and things like that. And then of course there's custom, custom variables and dimensions and metrics, which is, more of a, um, which is more of a Google Analytics thing. So if we were to look into these different types of interaction types and, and look at code for, for each one, we would see that like for page view tracking, you have, um, let me get my, uh, let me find my uh, laser pointer. So, so for page view tracking, you, um, as you can see, this is an activity that we have and we're uh, creating a tracker here and um, in our on-click listener, this is going to take us to a, a help link. And here, this is where you would put your, um, 
put a, a tracker where you'd send a view that you're going there. But this is also a place where if you're tracking specific users that you would take that user ID, these same places where this on click is occurring, these are the same places where you can, um, that, that you would be able to track your user and, and build up this information about where they are. So um, as far as event tracking, this is another activity um, where we've created, a, where we're instantiating a tracker. And uh, in our on-click listener for this video link, we have this on-click uh, event that could occur. And this is where we would take our tracker and send an event. And this is the same sort of place where you would take your user um, and store your user information about uh, what event they're doing. Um, and then for e-commerce tracking, uh, there's a, uh, kind of some extra things that are going on here with e-commerce. So you have to create a transaction uh, object, initialize a transaction object. This is all like um, what I've created here is uh, imagine you have built up a purchase object. So um, and imagine it has all sort of information related to a transaction here. But um, for specifically Google Analytics, you would have these, you have these steps. So step one is to build your transaction. Um, and then for each line item, you add the line item to a tracker, and then at the end, you send your transactions over. Um, so here in this on, basically in this on purchase confirmed, uh, when the purchase is made is where you would do your tracking here. Um, and then uh, if we were to talk about custom variables, um, you have a, a set custom variable here going on when in your activity when you uh, when a user completes their completes their purchase. Um, specifically, custom variables are different in Google Analytics. Um, you have to you have to send more information over. Um, there's uh, four um, four parameters. I'm sorry in the method signature. Um, there's an index that you have to use, and index are specific to custom variables in that there are only five, uh, five slots that you can have, and you have to indicate which one of the five you're using here. Um, then you have your, the name of the custom variable that you're setting, and here you have a value that you're setting. So in this case, we're using a sales rep ID, uh, and we're attributing the new subscription uh, to the sales rep that has created this. Um, and then you have your scope, which defaults to page level, so you don't want to use uh, that scope. Uh, the other scopes that they have available in, in um, Google Analytics is uh, visitor, session, and page scope. But page scope is kind of the same as, uh, as page tracking, so you don't want to use that and waste your, um, waste your indexes. So that's just a little information about Google Analytics if you, ever, if you didn't already know or if you wanted to know. And in addition, they have these other in, uh, interaction types that you could use uh, when you were to go to query, uh, use the core API to query, um, I'm sorry, the core reporting API to do your querying. Um, so there's a send social where you're using a network and an action and then a target location. Um, you're, you can also send timings of when, how long it takes for things to happen um, in your app. And there's another, there's a new uh, piece called uh, where you can set custom dimensions and metrics. Um, and that is for each one of these types. This is actually an upgrade from custom variables. For each custom dimension, you have 20 slots that you can use. And for metrics, you have 20 slots that you can use. And the difference between the two is um, custom variables is more of a cl is managed client side, whereas the uh, custom metrics and custom dimensions are managed on the server side. So. Uh, if you were to use custom dimensions and metrics, you would predefine your name and your scope um, on the, on the um, you would predefine those things on the, uh, on your interface, essentially on the um, Google Analytics interface. And then you would, uh, in the app, you would only send indexes and values and things. So, this is gonna bring us to uh, something that I thought of once in the middle of the night that I wanted to, if you don't get anything else out of, um, out of this discussion, I want you to get this, this idea of a user story from, um, from when you're doing user tracking or when you're doing uh, web analytics. I don't know how many people here are German, but I came here, I didn't know a lot of German, and I felt really awful, so I decided I was gonna put a little bit of German in my, <laughs> in my, um, in my, uh, in my presentation, but um, 
This is basically who, what, when, where, and why. And I'm embarrassed to pronounce them, but if you come make me do it, I'll, I'll pronounce them for you out in the hallway or something, but I'm not gonna do it over microphone. But these are the five things that, uh, that you should, that you should uh, take care of and that you should think about when you're going to do your reporting. If you have these five things um, in your report, in my opinion, you will, have covered, uh, you will have covered all of your bases in terms of what your users are doing and who they are, what, you know, when, when are they doing the things that they're doing and who. So just think of these things. If you don't get anything else out of this, I would be happy if you got that. So specifically, if we talk about each one of these things, um, Google Analytics has these metrics that you can use. For example, if you were to use the core, core reporting API, you could grab uh, visitor information, visitor types, uh, uh, the source of the, um, uh, the source of uh, where they're coming from, where they've um, gotten their, um, where they found out about your app, and uh, the user activity handle. Uh, for user tracking, you can use this sort of information uh, to identify your user without actually identifying your user. So you could use um, the secure Android ID. You could use the telephony, tele, 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 I can't even pronounce that. I think it's English. Telephony manager. Um, you could use a Git SIM serial number or a Git device ID. But you have to uh, take note that if you have an app that's using um, if you have an app that is a tablet, that's working on a tablet and working on uh, um, devices that are connected to the internet or, or have phone, um, phone data or, or whatever, this value is not available on, um, on tablets. So um, something like Build Serial, Serial might be better for that. Or if you have a company assigned ID that's internal to your company, um, you can track your users in that way. So these are, these are good ways where you're tracking your user and you know who your user is, but you don't have their name and you're not liable for that sort of information um, about who they are. Because a user, can, a user only has one name or one national ID or one driver's license number in their life, but they will, they will have multiple phones. So anybody could have the phone that they have and you're, it's just an easier way to, to, to track your users. So I have, um, there's ideas in the um, United States of uh, PII, personally sensitive, personally identifiable information, and that stuff like a full name, social security number, which I don't know if you have that in Germany or it's maybe something similar, driver's license number, license plate, birthplace, credit card numbers, any of this stuff, um, um, sometimes the IP address or date of birth, all of this stuff is considered sensitive, personally identifiable information. So I created the slide and I put a big X over it to say do not store this stuff about your users because it will make you liable for if something happens or let's say you're transferring your data from their phone to, to your data, database servers and that information gets uh, compromised in some way then you would be liable for that. So uh, we don't want that. Let's stay away from these, this sort of information. Um, OK, I guess I put two animations in there to really drive home the point that you do not store that stuff. So um, let's go on to the idea of what. What are our users doing? Um, so for user tracking, um, this is uh, Basically, where uh, the same as that anecdote that I was talking about earlier, where you're logging your app usage, and you may do it via singletons, or you may have um, a string where you're passing uh, for each page view where the user is going. You store that information into each string, into that same string, and then at the end of your session, you send that information off to to your database servers. Um, you can define your starter endpoints of when you can save this information based on session, based on whatever your app is and how their session may be uh, capped off. Um, another good way to uh, define a starter endpoint is based on, um, let's say you have a goal that you want your user, like a conversion goal that you want your user to, to, um, to make. For example, if they make a purchase or if they go to a certain page or they do a certain thing, that may be your goal that you want. And you can track uh, where the user goes and what the path they take up into that endpoint. And you can keep all that information per user. Um, that strategy of how you do that is going to be determined by your UI. Um, for example, if you have a multiple, multiple activity structure, that's going to be more difficult because there's a... Um, 
the on create and on destroy and all those events happen for each activity. And if you try to store, if you try to log that information at that time, for, for example, if you have a session, uh, a session app where it determines where you're storing all that information per session, and you do it the wrong way, you might see that each one of your session is where the user just hit that one activity. And that's not a true representation of what your user has actually done. So one that I saw was if you had a single, um, one um, example that worked for me when I was proving all this out was um, if you have a single activity, multiple fragment uh, sort of structure, this is better because you have that one activity and you, you've determined that the user has begun this activity of using your app and then each of your fragments represent a page that, they've gone, that they're going to. And uh, when they leave that activity, you have a clear definition of, uh, of when their session has begun and ended. So that's cool. Um, the one thing that I noticed about, uh, that I thought about uh, with the idea of tracking a user up to a particular goal is that this is the same thing on, in Google Analytics as multi-channel funnels, where you're watching, uh, you're watching what your users do up until they get to a particular goal. So that's kind of a way where you create your own uh, multi-channel funnels and you can start to group uh, your users and see what are they most likely, what are they doing, and uh, how can you use that to create a smoother user experience. Um, so yeah, let's continue to uh, when. Um, determining when your users are using your apps. So in these same uh, event locations in your app where they're doing a clicking or whatever, you can also choose to log uh, the system time. And this is, um, this is useful only if you trust that your user is not manually setting their time on their devices. Um, I have one particular device where I change the time all the time because I'm cheating on a game that I like to play and it's time-based. So that one, if I was logging that, those times would be completely off. But on another game, on another phone, I want all my time to be right on that phone. So I keep that time correct. So those are things that when you, when you start to collect this time data and things start to look funny, then maybe you can determine, well, is it that my game is time-based and my users have realized that uh, they can change the time and, and, and get certain features or, or elements and things? So these are all things that you should consider when you're, when you're going to log this stuff. Um, also, um, depending, mm, well, let's just continue. Uh, basically, at the end of your sessions, or at the end of um, whatever time you deem, that is when you would, of course, submit your data to, uh, to your database servers. Um, in terms of where, there's um, the Android location package that works really well. I love it. Um, where you use that look to basically determine the latitude and longitude of where your users are. Um, Google Analytics specifically will, um, they have these dimensions that they use uh, based on the IP address that, they, that they're storing um, when, they're, uh, when they're tracking this hit information. And uh, that seems to work pretty well too um, if you needed to query for data using the core reporting API and specifically understand what cities and states and uh, what countries your users are, are, um, are come, bring, sending their data in from. So um, anyway, with the location package, there's of course that trade-off between uh, killing a user's battery and, and accuracy that, uh, that you need to account for. So um, we had a, in the company that I'm currently working at, um, oh, I wanna tell this anecdote. If you wanna hear the anecdote, I'll tell you later, but I, 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 I wanna cover all this information, but I have a good anecdote about um, the, where our auctions are located from each other based on and how we determine uh, whether or not to update our, our users' uh, information about what location, what auction location they should be receiving sale data from. So, but let's continue to uh, why. This is a very subjective question that I don't, I think that uh, you, you analyze these other, these other, uh, Inter interrogative questions, you analyze those into, in order to determine why your users are doing things. And ultimately what you want to do is you align your app goals with what your users' actions are in order to, um, in order to create a, a smoother experience for them and to make more money for you and to, to fully realize your app's potential and make sure that the goals that you have are in line with your users' goals. So. Um, I want to talk briefly about um, how Google uh, collects their data 
this is um, and then how you can do it in terms of uh, user and sort in terms of user interaction or if you wanted to create your own uh, your own uh, collection tool so uh, they have all this stuff going on where you're going you're creating this event object and you're storing it onto a SQL uh, SQLite database on the user's phone and then there's a network dispatcher that's uh, spinning up a dispatch handler and that's creating an async task and doing all these things and it's waiting for an HTTP connection and the callbacks uh, that come that um, the callbacks are what essentially clear out your SQLite database so this is a lot of stuff and I was thinking oh you know our, you know people can use that and and create something very similar if they wanted to um, if they wanted to send data using their user tracker tool. But I realized also that um, you could do this very simply using a custom uh, content provider and just a sync adapter that works specifically for that content provider. The great thing about a sync adapter is that um, it requires user permission, which removes your liability. So if the user, you would build into your app, um, enhance your user experience, and they would hit OK, and then you are able to track their data. And since they've given you that user permission, now you can track whatever information you want. You can send it. The great thing about um, sync adapters is that it's handling network availability for you. It's handling the scheduling, and it's handling any sort of interrupts that you have. That, that you run across. So if you, all you have to do is um, fill in some information, call on perform sync, which is uh, um, an override method that you use if you extend sync adapter, and uh, you push all that data that you have from your custom content provider to your, to your uh, database server, and, and that's how you would uh, collect data. Um, I feel like we're running out of time, but I'll just, oh, we're not, we're good? Okay, wonderful. So um, in terms of app report categories, uh, if you were to log into uh, to Google Analytics, you would find these four, these four different uh, uh, app report categories. And I put next to them um, these information about who, where, and when, like what types of categories you can use to, to get those questions uh, answered for the, those five inter interrogative questions. Um, and they also have what's interesting is an app an outcome category where um, you're tracking your targeted objectives and your goals. So that's kind of a way to determine um, why things are happening. But in my opinion, um, I'm talking a little bit about the Google Analytics um, uh, how every how that. Uh, API is used, but I don't want to go too much into the user interface because I feel that it's more important to think of it as like a database source and to query that any sort of data that you collect and use those data results into your own, um, into any sort of external data uh, um, applications that maybe you've built up for your company. So I wanted to put in, this is like mostly, uh, I think a dev oriented uh, user experience discussion, but I put in, um, essentially a sample query that you would use for your core reporting if you wanted to call the core reporting API. So um, some things in particular to think about. Um, so the core reporting API returns uh, JSON objects. So it returns all of your data in a JSON format that you can just use a parser to, to use that information as you need. Um, there are uh, four required parameters. Um, the ID, which is essentially a table that you get, uh, where is it? The table information that you get when you register for it. Um, you get uh, dimension is, is, is not required, but start date and end date, and then whatever specific metrics that you want are required. So um, I want to explain the, okay, I want to compare uh, Georgia, uh, G oh, I do that every time. GA is short for Georgia, and Google Analytics is also GA. So, and I'm from Georgia, so every time I see GA, I say Georgia, and I don't mean to. But um, a Google Analytics query versus a SQL query, I wanted to compare the two so that you could understand when you're creating this query, what exactly are you asking for. So. Um, any select columns that you define in your, uh, in your SQL query are going to be the same as metrics. So um, you can think of metrics as basically your columns. Um, the from part of when you define your table is going to be the same as that profile ID that you receive when you, when you register. Um, 
the wear filters is basically the filters that you would put on your, um, do I have an example of filters? Yeah, so this filter here is uh, just the same as your where statement. So in this case, we're saying, you know, you're selecting from this table where the days since last visit equal, I believe five, or I'm not sure. Basically, that also, this has to be encoded, URL encoded, so that's why I have that going on there. Um, let me finish. Um, dimensions is the same as grouping by, uh, grouping your data by some sort of, uh, by, for example, um, location or IP address or city or state or uh, whether or not the users uh, have converted in some sort of way that your app is defined. Um, and uh, essentially, this is how you get your information uh, from the Google Analytics servers into some sort of raw format that you can use and that you can store um, on a daily basis uh, and, and use it for your own necessary requirements. As far as uh, user tracking, that's going to all depend on how you, how you and your company has decided to set up databases or set up however, basically however you decide to set up your database tables. Um, if you even decide to use database tables, if maybe you wanted to use a graph database or some other, some other sort of system. So that's why I kind of kept that one uh, outside of the scope of this. So. Let us um, wrap up to just say that um, I just wanted to um, specifically say let's make sure that we protect our users even though we are able to track them. Let's make sure that, uh, that we protect them because they keep us in business. Um, and let's remember to understand the boundaries of user privacy as well. Um, that is all I have to say on the subject. So thank you very much for listening and I'm open for questions if you all have any.